Hey folks, welcome to my top 10 of 2020. Now, typically my top 10 lists have historically been things that are big, thematic, story-driven type games, games that maybe I've played once or twice. Yes, they're awesome games, but this time around I decided to go and take a look at all the games that I've played multiple times through the year that have given me all kinds of enjoyment from each play. So I narrowed it down to 10, and there's some interesting choices here, stuff that I may not have normally put on a list, but indeed, all of these games have just been a ton of fun for me throughout the year. So let's jump in and take a look. So my number 10 is The Last Aurora. The radioactive dust of the last war has frozen the northern countries, now known as the Ice Desert. You are one of a few survivors that live in this icy wasteland as the resources of the old world are now exhausted. Yes, 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 lots of theme in this one. So this is a post-apocalyptic game set in a frozen and desolate land, and I'm typically drawn to this type of theme, post-apocalyptic games and the survival aspect that they depict. And, you know, they do a good job here having you deal with dwindling resources and bandits along your trek so you'll have to manage your crew to gather resources, recruit survivors, and improve your vehicles, which is super cool. And so the game essentially turns into a race as you race towards the finish line or the shoreline because the last Aurora is patrolling, trying to pick up survivors, and you hope to make it there before your fellow players. Number nine. So I've never been a really big car guy in any way until this last year after picking up a used Mini Cooper in 2019. Now racing games are totally on my radar and Rallyman GT tops it out for me. Why? Well, the dice of course, and the sense of racing is strong with this one. I love games that incorporate dice chucking and I love that Holy Grail Games took this and reimagined the classic from 2009. Yes, some say this is just a roll and move. Yeah, maybe to some degree, but the sense of speed and timing is fantastic. I love the modular track and there are so many possibilities playing predefined or creating your own tracks. And the push your luck aspect. Oh, I love that in games so much. And the accelerating, coasting, braking, all the things you would have to keep in mind when racing, as well as weather conditions and using focus tokens to help you bring your driver and your car to the finish line. So many twists and turns here, so many fun game nights associated with this one. Number eight, Dwellings of Eldervale. So, you know, this is an epic worker placement game, which is set in a once lost magical world. Giant elemental monsters roam with dragons, wizards, and warriors, battle for dominance over eight elemental realms. So, you know, many worker placement games have, how do I say it? Well, a pasted on theme. Not the case here. They've done a fantastic job pulling you into this world and all your actions have real meaning. But it's not just a worker placement game. You'll be doing some engine building and hand management along with variable player powers, uh, which keeps me coming back for more all the time. And of course, the miniatures, artwork, and components are simply amazing in this game. Now, it was a long time that I only had the prototype and I still played that over and over. It's just such a good game that I can't recommend it enough. Number seven is Whistle Mountain. So this is another worker placement game. This is basically a sequel to Whistle Stop, to some degree anyway. But this time around, you will be flying airships to gather resources in the high mountains. The fun here is in the building the scaffolding and trying to save your workers from the rising waters. I love the puzzle aspect of building these scaffolding and you will be acquiring new abilities for your workers and your airships along the way. You know, I've played several times and each game has been super unique. Lots of replayability here, and this might be quickly becoming my favorite worker placement game. And it's just simply a beautiful game. Number six, Super Fantasy Brawl. So you have a team of three champions, all with unique powers and abilities. You will use these abilities or cards to attack, maneuver, displace enemies, and claim objectives. Now, I really like the fact that you can combine any combination of champions when forming your team, and the cards and abilities are so easy to understand that you can engage and be competitive in your very first game. No need to know the cards intimately before becoming effective in the game. And of course, 
all the amazing miniatures and high level of sheer fun makes this a game not to miss. You know, my first play of this game was with Sam Healy and we had a blast. I loved the back and forth and I had him on the ropes, but in the end, he did squash me. Number five, Faza. So aliens known as the Faza have invaded your city. Think, you know, War of the Worlds or Flash Gordon. These aliens are bent on destruction. You know, I love the nod to the old sci-fi vibe of the 50s. The artwork and theme really drives this home. So, you know, it's up to you and a rebel faction of Faza and your fellow players to stop the threat. You will have to shut down the mothership and their drones, but you must recruit rebel Faza to help you invade the mothership. I love cooperative games so, so much. And this one delivers, giving you that sense of high pressure and urgency. Plus, there are eight characters with different abilities to choose from. Like so many games like this, you really need to put together an effective team to save the city and the world. Number four, Fallout Shelter the Board Game. So I'm a huge fan of the video game series. And of course that theme, post-apocalyptic, appeals to me. But you know, I'm also a big fan of the mobile app and they have managed to nail the same experience from the app and put it in the board game. You know, this is a worker placement game where you run around doing various tasks and managing resources throughout the vault, trying to keep your people happy and building out your level of the vault, dealing with threats and power outages. I really like the threat cards and how they overlay the areas of the rooms. And there are lots of weapons and item cards to help you on the way. Now, it's easy to set up and play, and it's in continuous rotation at my house. Number three is Project L. If you find me at a convention, I will gladly sit and play this game with you all day long. The main goal of this one is to simply use your puzzle pieces to build out your puzzle. But along the way, you have to build out your puzzle engine of pieces and this is key. I really like the Zen quality of this game and how easily it is to play and teach new players. But the quality of the components and the tactile feel really gets me. I love it so much. And it has probably been my most played game in 2020. And now with the new expansion on its way, Project L Finesse, this will give you even more ways to play. I don't really play a lot of solo games, but this one I play while watching movies or over lunch. It is just so, so good. Number two is Too Many Bones Splice and Dice. So Too Many Bones is easily in my top five favorite games of all time. I love all the expansions and high level of components in this game so much. But Splice and Dice allows you to go to the lab and basically build your own creatures or tyrants to fight against. It also brings new tyrants encounters and new dual baddies into the Bones world. But really, the tyrant creation is what makes this a ton of fun for me. And I simply love the Too Many Bones system. I realize that this is just an add-on or an expansion, but I will sit and create possible creatures all day long. And that brings us to number one which is Moonrakers. No, not based on the Bond film, but it does take place in space. You will be doing ship and crew building. Yes, this is a deck builder. And building alliances with other players to complete contracts is absolutely key. Well, temporary alliances anyway. You will be using your cars to fulfill these contracts, thrusters, shields, weapons, reactors, and crew. In the end, you hope to have the most prestige. You know, I've had the best time with this game. So many great experiences around it. It is hands down my all time favorite deck builder at this point. And the final production of the game is simply stunning. And I got to play this game with Becca Scott on Game the Game, who owes me another game because she just barely beat me. Next time, Becca, next time. All right, folks, thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. And I wish you all a very, very happy holiday season. Be safe. And of course, until next time, we'll see you at the table.